Good evening. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Town Council for Monday, March 14, 2011. I'd ask the Town Clerk to take the roll call. Chair Sherman? Here. Councillor Guvernale? Here. Councillor Jordan? Here. Councillor Lennon? Here. Councillor Sullivan? Here. Councillor Swift Kayata? Here. And Councillor Walsh? Here. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Town Council reports and correspondence. I Jim. Oh. Oh, you want to do the? Uh, I was just going to give the finance report. Oh, sure. Which uh, it's not very substantive, given I thought it would be a little bit premature. Um, but I just wanted to review the important dates for folks watching us on television. So bear with me, and just to make note. Um, if you miss any of them, they're all posted on the town website under the meetings calendar, which is in the left hand of the home page. So Tuesday, March 15th, there's a school board budget workshop at 7 o'clock in the Jordan Conference Room. All, in fact, most of them are, unless I make note. Wednesday, March 16th, we have uh, our first municipal budget workshop at 7.30 in the conference room. Next week, Monday, March 21st, again, we have a municipal budget workshop at 7.30. Tuesday the 22nd, uh, school board has their budget workshop, second one in the high school library at 7.30. Thursday, March 24th, school board again, their budget workshop in the high school library. Um, then jumping to April, Monday, April 4th, we have uh, our final budget workshop wrap up if need be. Wednesday the 6th, school board um, does their presentation to us at 7.30 in this conference room and then we both, both boards have a chance to discuss it together. Monday, April 11th is a regular town council meeting when we will set the date for the public hearing. Um, we plan to allocate some time that evening for folks to, uh, to comment on the budget. So if you're interested in the budget and would like to weigh in, Monday, April 11th is a good time to do so. Tuesday, April 12th, school board has their regular monthly meeting. Monday, April 25th is the official public hearing on the budget and our final town council vote. And of course, May 10th, is the citizen vote on the budget validation. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Any other reports or correspondence? Jim. Uh, Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Uh, just a, an update for the council. Uh, the um, commission has been working very, very hard uh, on the issues about uh, revenue in the park. And um, there's a new chairperson, that's Bill Nickerson. And the committee is uh, working through the final sort of revisions of a concession trial for this summer and fall. And that is um, going to be finalized by the commission on Thursday night, at least that's the intention on the 16th. And what they're doing is moving towards what they would call a request for proposal. And what they're hoping for is that the council will take this up and the possibility of having a meeting on the 21st, either before our finance committee meeting or after, and consider this request for proposal for concessions as a trial for this coming season. And the reason for that request, and I don't know whether we formalize this later in our agenda, maybe the uh, manager can give us some guidance, is that if we don't get this um, approved by the council, this season may come and go and we will have missed the opportunity. Um, they have worked very, very hard at, on this particular proposal. I don't have a copy for you to see tonight, but once it is uh, recommended by them on Thursday, uh, our hope is that we can get it to you, get it out for public review as well and with ample notice for a meeting that could be planned and implemented on the 21st. But the long short of it is this is, um, was, it's in the work plan uh, and it is a very important part of what we've been trying to do in the park and that's to generate ideas that are consistent with the vision and the mission of the park but also to generate revenue opportunities 
and to enhance the experience that both citizens and citizens of the greater Portland area, and for that matter, all over the United States, get when they, when they come to Fort Williams. There are many other things on the work plan that they've been working through, but I'm, I'm just very pleased that we're, we're getting to the point where we have some things to share with the town council for you to make some decisions about direction. So I put that on the table as a report, but needing some guidance, maybe the manager can help us with that. Uh, Mike, if you want to address that, uh, that would be helpful. I, it would seem to me we would need to get this onto an agenda fairly quickly to, to <clears throat> be able to make hay for this upcoming summer season. If, if the chair or a majority of the council wish to call a meeting, my recommendation would be you do so for the 21st following the Finance Committee meeting. And, and we'll, have, we'll have available on the morning of the 17th online the, the proposal from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission so that everyone will have a chance to see it. So would that be the timing that would work, would we expect? Yeah, it, otherwise, you, you know, your April meeting is not till the second Monday. I don't know what date it is, but we've got to get the proposals out so people can start planning what they're going to be right. selling and doing. Okay. Our, how do council members feel about doing that special 21st. meeting on the 21st? Yep. Okay, it seems like we have consensus, so we could uh, call a special meeting for the 21st following our finance committee meeting. We'll prepare an agenda. Okay, great. Thank you, Jim. Anything you. else on the? No, that just to, they're working very hard, and it's uh, it's it's refreshing to to see the direction they're headed in, um, and I think they they have, uh, um, you know, they believe me, a lot of hours have gone into this, both at meetings and in small subgroups of uh, doing the research and getting you know the necessary best in class to present to the town council. Any other reports? Oh, Frank. Um, I just wanted to give a little bit of an update on the Alternative Energy Committee. Um, I was going to give you a fuller update uh, because there was a meeting, it was supposed to be a meeting last week, but it was canceled because it, people had conflicts. But I, I did want to highlight the fact that they've got um, in the work plan, which they submitted, a uh, really exciting, really exciting um, and full agenda for the year as it relates to uh, projects they're undertaking. Um, in their first meeting in February, which was the only <laughs> meeting they had, uh, which I did not attend, but um, they were addressing the boiler replacement. They are replaced, uh, they're addressing the high efficiency street lights, uh, solar thermal project. And at the next meeting on April 7th, uh, they'll be looking at uh, biomass boilers and having an exciting road trip to Oxford to see a biomass boiler this week, which I may or may not be able to attend. I'm not sure yet. Um, also on the 7th, uh, they'll be looking at um, natural gas possibilities piping to Cape Elizabeth Town Center, which we talked about last year. I'm not exactly sure what the status is on that is, but probably get an update uh, from that meeting. So, but um, they are a very active group, and I think they're doing really good work. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anyone else? I just on the uh, topic of the boiler, I did receive a very nice note from the interim superintendent Ken Murphy, uh, thanking the council for uh, um, helping to finance that. So uh, again, that was much appreciated by the superintendent as well as the school board. Uh, I also uh, had the pleasure of going to the uh, swimming pool, the high school pool, a few Sundays ago for an open swim and experienced firsthand the slide. <laughs> it's not just a slide, it's actually a, basically an obstacle course. Uh, it's, uh, Caitlin Jordan can attest, and I, I'm glad to say I made it through. Uh, uh, but what was great to see was how, how many people were there enjoying the open swim. It seems to me that that's having the intended consequence, which is to uh, generate more attendance. And I also finally did attend a school board meeting uh, last week. Uh, I was there actually speaking on behalf of uh, project graduation, but what was uh, the nicest thing for me to see were all the high school athletes reporting on their seasons. Uh, and uh, we had some very successful teams, and we've all read about, for example, the high school boys basketball team, but we also had teams that weren't quite as successful, but it just seemed to me uh, that the students were so enthusiastic about competing, that that's really what it's all about. So anyway, it was, uh, I, I, I no, noted to the school board that they get sports updates in their meetings, and we, we don't tend to get that. So I thought I would uh, add that tonight. Um, uh, this is our first opportunity for citizens to discuss items that are not on the agenda. If anybody's here to speak, please come forward. Uh, with not seeing anyone, we can move on to the town manager's report. Uh, yes, uh, 
Thank you, David. I just, uh, before I speak, I want to defer to Deborah to give an update on some of our online activities. Great, thank you very much. Um, one of the Council's goes, goals under continuing initiatives is to implement more availability of online transactions. I just want to highlight three briefly. Um, from October 15th through January 31st each year, uh, residents can go online to register their dogs. We register almost 1,200 in Cape Elizabeth, which actually is really amazing for a community of our size. 330 residents uh, registered their dogs online this year, which I thought was pretty amazing, about 27%. So that program is working very well. Um, excise tax, I took a quick look um, of the last three years, um, full fiscal years, uh, 2008, 9, and 10. And on the average, um, we register 723 vehicles a month. Out of that, an average of 105 vehicles are registered online, so about 16% on that. Each year, it's uh, slightly risen, and I, and I anticipate that as we go along, more and more folks will take advantage. And that's for re-registrations. Um, the ability to do new registrations is not available. Um, a new offering that we have is paying your property taxes online. You may have seen with the tax bills that went out on February 18th, um, we announced the new service. And residents can go online, pay their property taxes, or they can schedule a payment. Uh, they can pay by electronic check, debit card, or credit card. And there are service fees for that. Um, this program has generated a lot of questions from residents. My number and email is about on every page of it, which is fine. Really great questions from residents. Um, they have really um, uh, enjoyed the opportunity to register online. I just had a woman call today. She's in California. And I noticed tonight when I came in, I checked. She paid online today because she couldn't get home to do that. So we have a lot of folks like that, the ability to uh, register in advance. Again, some people say, oh, I might forget or I might be called away from work or what have you, so they're able to actually schedule a payment. Um, just today, in fact, we had seven new people registered, so we have 31 um, folks that have registered online. We have uh, 10 scheduled payment at payments of over $37,000. We have some accounts that have already paid over $20,000, and out of those 31 that have registered, 10 have elected so far to go paperless, that they can receive their tax bill next go around um, via email. I certainly uh, see these numbers increasing. We've only been online for three weeks, but we just wanted to uh, remind folks that that offering is available. Taxes are due April 5th. Uh, and again, being a, a council goal, we thought it was a good opportunity to update you folks, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing the numbers gain um, on these offerings. So. Thanks, Deborah. Do you have a question? Sure. Um, uh, we're charging fees for all online transactions, not just credit cards? That's correct. There's, it's 40 cents to do um, a payment by electronic check, $3.95 a flat fee for debit cards, and $2.95 cents, $2 uh, per transaction for credit cards. Those are service fees that go right to the company that we've partnered with, Invoice Cloud. It's not a service fee that the town uh, receives, um, but it's very clear when folks go to enter their information that there's a, um, a payment for your taxes and the service fee and then the total. So. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Deborah. Great, thank you. Mike? Yeah, uh, thanks, David. I, and thank you, Deborah, uh, for the uh, good report. Um, I know Deborah put an awful lot of time in, particularly the, the relationship with Invoice Cloud and all the data systems our computer service provided to set that up, and much appreciated. I did want to make mention that the school department lost uh, one of their custodians, passed away uh, a week or so ago, Alan Westbury. Alan worked for the school department five or six years. But in addition to that, he also was a police officer for the town for 31 years uh, and uh, was a good, dedicated employee and longtime resident of Cape Elizabeth and uh, certainly will be missed and uh, appreciate all that he did for the town through the 36 years uh, that, he, that he served the town in various positions. I um, wanted to make mention the annual reports for 2009 and 10 are both available, uh, one late, one on time. Uh, if anyone would like a copy, they are available here at the town office. Uh, if the councils haven't seen them yet, they're up in their boxes up front. Uh, third, third, I wanted to mention, once a year we get a check from Time Warner Cable 
uh, for the franchise fee, everyone when they get